when by the sale hub today we're talking about home materials and we're talking about fiberglass in particular so we're going to go into the pros the cons you know the positives and negatives as to why you might choose that material and we're also going to go into what you might use that material for so you know what kind of sailing it might be better suited to so we've teamed up with sailing uma for this episode so if you don't know those guys you've got to have been living under a rock Dan and Kiga have been sailing for years, absolutely nailed the YouTube world, absolutely nailed videography, great stories to tell too. So definitely go check them guys out and definitely stick around to see what they've got to say about fiberglass. Now, this is part of a multi-part series with other types of holes, different materials and all the rest of it, but let's get cracking and talk about fiberglass right now. So here we have a swatch of fiberglass, commonly known as GRP. Yeah. And I'd say this is the most commonly used uh, hull material in, in pleasure yachting. And so what are the advantages for a cruiser to have a GRP hull? I suppose the main one's cost. Yeah. So when we look at the fabrication of uh, the GRP hull, it is made in a mould. Moulds are expensive, but the way that we get around that expense is you can now use that mould countless times. So most production boats are built from a mould. And the reason it becomes cheap is because we can lay up a boat in a matter of days. So labour costs are just annihilated compared to the months it takes to build, let's say, a metal boat or a custom boat. Performance in terms of you can design lots of different types of hulls? Performance. So if you're looking for a cruiser, a long-term cruiser, or if you're looking for a race boat, you can build these things light, you can build these things heavy. Not as light as a, um, a carbon composite boat, let's say, but pretty damn light. So performance at a cost level, you can't beat it. The other real advantage that you have with a fiberglass boat is that every boatyard will be able to fix it. It's actually super easy to fix yourself. And a lot of the time you don't have to do crazy things like take half of your boat apart to repair it. So in general, really easy to maintain yourself. Nice. Yeah. So we chose a fiberglass boat for a few reasons. One, they're super available and very easy to find. The majority of boats out there are fiberglass, and so there's a plethora of boats to choose from. However, now that we've been on a fiberglass boat for nine years, um, I think we'd probably choose it again. Uh, we like that it's very easy to work with, and you can kind of do all the work yourself. You just need something to grind and some brushes and a roller to put it back together. Um, we always joke, if we don't like it, we can rip it out and do it again. So that to us is the biggest benefit of fiberglass is just how easy it is to work with. Obviously the big con is itchy. Um, it's very easy to get sort of tingly for a day or two after you work with fiberglass and wearing a Tyvek suit or some protective gear helps. Um, over the years, we've just gotten kind of used to the itch, uh, cold shower after and the next day it doesn't really feel like anything anymore. So uh, we've just gotten used to it and we don't really mind the itch anymore. The other thing with fiberglass is that it's super durable and requires almost zero maintenance. That's why there's so many 50 year old fiberglass boats out there. We wanted a boat that we could sail and not necessarily maintain all the time. We ended up with a project boat, but um, generally speaking, it requires less maintenance than aluminum or wood. Definitely wood. Wood's a labor of love. One thing you do have to be careful about is osmosis, right? Yeah, that's entirely right. So osmosis is basically the water has salt in it and the salt is trying to get into the resin, let's put it that simple. It gets in there and it starts to delaminate the layers by basically splitting the layers apart as, as they, it forces its way in there and then it sort of expands. Okay. And what are the telltale signs of osmosis within a hull? So osmosis, you might start seeing small little bubbles or blisters as they're called. They can start off from being really, really small and end up massive. So that's how they start out. Sometimes tiny little craters, bits of gel coat missing and usually in almost circular areas and they could be down to two, three millimeters. If you see those, if you pop them with something like a drawing compass, you can smell the moisture that comes out. If it smells like vinegar, that's pretty much osmosis. Mm, and pretty much all fiberglass boats have it. Yeah, yeah. It reduces the strength of the boat. And at some point you're gonna to have to grind out 
the osmosis and repair it. And so there's no way you can avoid this happening to well, GRP? Like I say, vinyl ester pretty much oh. stops it, especially if you take it out of the water and allow the hull to dry out. And the single coatings of vinyl ester certainly do help. Other things you can do is put epoxy coatings on the boat, which make a massive difference. But by no means put an epoxy coating on a boat if the hull has any moisture in it already. Or it needs to be the correct level of moisture. It needs Other to dry out first. Otherwise it's going to get worse, not better, quickly. So GRP, or glass reinforced plastic, it's fiberglass. This is a woven piece. It also comes in chop strand with um, a powder in it. Now, the reason that powder's there is it reacts with the resin that we use to bond this together. So polyester resin is the more commonly used one. There are other resins, so there is vinyl ester, which is primarily the other one that's used. Vinyl ester is more resistant to osmosis, which makes it a much better thing to use. But it's more expensive. So polyester remains the one that's used, although some companies such as Oyster and Halberg Rassi, Nyad, those kind of people, they often put in one layer of vinyl ester first as a barrier to prevent osmosis getting into the polyester. So effectively, this is layered up and it creates a hole. And to get, so you say it's layered up, I assume, you know, different manufacturers, different styles of hull are going to be using different thicknesses to gain different strengths? They are, yeah. So basically, the thicker it is, the stronger it is. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, so I hope that episode makes some sense for you and it's maybe brought to light some of the reasons that fiberglass is, let's say, the more commonly used material in the world. And it's probably also going to tell you the reasons for that. I hope it makes some sense to you. I think the next one's probably going to be on steel, so check out that for steel. Uh, and we're going to do one on aluminium as well. And then we'll probably go into composites and maybe even like the likes of, uh, you know, strip plank wooden boats, plywood boats as well. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, stick around and we'll see you next time.